Surveillance efforts against the latest strain of MPOX are being ramped up globally after the World Health Organization this week declared the current outbreak in Africa a public health emergency. In the days since that declaration, cases have been detected in both Sweden and Pakistan. The outbreak originated in the Democratic Republic of Congo, where around 500 deaths have been reported. Katharina Schroeder is the Director for Advocacy at Save the Children in the DRC. She joins us now from the capital, Kinshasa. Katharina, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. Thank you for having us on the show. Katharina, we know that the community has dealt with the Mpox virus two years ago. How different is it this time around? What we see on the ground is that this particular variant, uh, 1B of the virus, of the Mpox virus, is much more deadly and it's also affecting children much more. In some specific health centers, we have up to 86% of the suspected cases um, identified as children. Uh, so we are very concerned about that. As you say, this is a new virus. The symptoms seem to be a lot milder. Does that make it difficult? more difficult to detect among the general population? So actually from, from what we see is um, that the symptoms can be mild, but however, we have very high um, fatality rates, like a lot of children, especially up to 11% of the cases um, and deadly. So, and this is also because the virus is now spreading particularly in the east of um, the Democratic Republic of Congo. Mm. And that region is also affected by conflict. So we are speaking about a very vulnerable part of the population. The WHO is stepping up efforts to try to stem the spread um, of the Mpox virus and, and to provide aid to the DRC. What's that looking like? Yeah, a lot is needed on the ground. Um, if you see there are huge numbers, millions of people displaced um, in the east of the country. So those people, even if they know what they, they should be doing, that they should be isolating, they do not have the means to sustain themselves for the four weeks isolation period. Mm -hmm. So it's really important to step up as requested by the World Health Organization efforts, um, internationally coordinated efforts, um, of course, with the close collaboration with the government um, of of the Democratic Republic of Congo um, to support the population to in, in long-term and in short-term measures to um, increase isolation but also increase vaccination and increase general support to the population. Now you've been quoted as saying that the most vulnerable people are the IDP, the internally displaced peoples of course. Many of them are in crowded camps so those will be very challenging uh, elements there and situations to deal with. Are there are these camps able to access these vaccines? Um, so far, uh, the numbers of vaccines available are far from the numbers required. So in the first emergency response mode, the primary measures are isolation. So as Save the Children, we are providing isolation um, centers, we're supporting isolation centers and primary health care centers with the necessary equipment. However, in the long term, um, it's really important to step up also vaccination efforts and to strengthen the health system um, here in DRC. We've been talking about uh, vaccines, of course, but what about treatment for this new virus? Uh, how, how do you get treatment? Is there much access to this sort of treatment? And what does it look like? Yes, um, so it's a viral infection, of course. But there, there are uh, medications um, available, which we have also been providing. However, much more needs to be done. There's also the possibility to um, vaccinate people post-exposure if they think they are at risk. So, but all of that um, needs to be really increased. The efforts need to be increased. Um, the materials available are not sufficient at the moment. All right, Katarina Schroeder from Save the Children. We thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much also.